Oh, okay, give me a second. Okay, so warm up. How many years are in five thousand or seven thousand five hundred forty-three seconds? What we got? You may know what they have. Yeah, go for it. Just give me two decimal points. Zero point. How many zeros? Three zeros. And then what? Two, four. Two, two, four? Two, three. Two, four. Two, four. Two, four. Two, four years? Yeah. All right. I have no idea if that's correct. Let's let's actually. It should be determined if that's correct. Let's, let's try to solve it. <laughs> Okay, so whenever you're doing these, always write the number you start with in the top uh, left corner. Now, um, remember the goal is at some point you can do these without me giving you the number of boxes. Now the unit up here that always goes diagonal, um, second, and you can put it over one. Second, so we can, uh, why don't we just say SEC, abbreviate that. Southeastern Conference. Um, now, the new unit you want to put on top. Ideally, like if you're looking for years, if you know how to go from seconds to years, you'd put years up there. The issue is, I don't know how many seconds are in a year or how many years are in a second. If you do, all the power to you. But what we do know, like it should be kind of common sense or like common knowledge, is in, in 60 seconds are in what? One minute. One minute, right? Okay. Now, if minutes are here, minutes has to go diagonal. Remember, the old unit always goes diagonal, so it can cancel off. New unit goes on top. So if you don't want to go from minutes to years, again, you could put years up there, but I don't know how many minutes are in a year. I do know how many minutes are in an hour, though. So we'll say HR for an hour. Uh, in one hour, there's 60 minutes, right? Okay. Now then, hours is up here. Hours has to go diagonal. Now, you can put years up there. If you know how to go from hours to years, you can put years up there. But I don't know how many hours are in a year. I do know that there are 24 hours, though, in one day. Okay? Now, we're almost there. Days are there, so days needs to go diagonal. Then, we can go from days to years. You should know that conversion. Say YR for years. We know that in one year, there's 365 days. Okay? So then your answer should be 7,543 divided by 60, divided by 60, divided by 24, divided by 365. Remember, you divide the numbers in the bottom. Numbers on the top, you multiply. But here, if you have ones on the top, you don't have to multiply or divide by one. Anybody verify that answer? 0 0.00024 years? Any objections to that? Okay. So you should get 0 0.00024 years. Now, what if I want to put that in scientific notation? What's that in scientific notation? Think about it. scientific notation. Yeah, before. 2.4 times 10 to the negative 4. You got it. You go 1, 2, 3, 4 places. Remember when you're doing scientific notation? You always want it so there's one number to the left of the decimal point. Okay? So you got one number to the left of the decimal point, so this would be 2.4. Let's get those phones put up for me back there. Yeah. Yeah. 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Guys, minus 4. 4 because you made the decimal 4 spots. Minus 4 because uh, you're coming from a really, really small number. If it was positive four, you'd be going to a really big number, okay? All right, um, there you go. Okay, so getting those notes in front of you, um, it's not in the note packet, but uh, I printed off just one sheet of notes for you. It's on density, and you got some blanks to fill in here, so go ahead and start filling these in. So to understand density, you need to understand what mass is. And mass, you know, like, I feel like you might hear the word mass thrown around, and like a lot of times people think of it as having to do with weight. And um, mass is the measurement of the amount of matter there is in something. Ma matter is anything um, uh, essentially that, that has mass and takes up space. So mass 
whenever you're measuring it, you typically measure it in grams. Okay? You could use kilograms, but um, especially for our purposes in the lab today, you're going to use grams because we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be using like that much of like the substance. Okay? So we're going to be measuring it in uh, in grams. And then uh, to understand uh, density, you need to understand the states of matter. So three main states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. And uh, we talk about how atoms are these essentially these uh, spheres, right? So whenever you're thinking of uh, like a solid, liquid, and a gas, think of them at the atomic level, like all the way down to the atoms. And a solid would be all of the atoms are just clumped together. A liquid would be the atoms are going to be spaced further apart than they were in the solid. And then a gas, the matter is uh, going to be spaced even more apart. Okay. Are we good here? Okay. Now volume. Understand density, you got to understand volume. So volume is the measurement, the amount of space an object takes up. How much space does something take up? If something takes up a lot of space, you would say it has a lot of volume. If it takes up very little space, you would say it does not have a lot of volume. So we got some new blanks here. Let's make sure we're, we're filling these in. All right, now whenever you're measuring volume, you want to measure it in um, either milliliters or centimeters cubed. Now, to understand centimeters cubed, think back to geometry class, right? If I want to find if I want to find the volume of this cube, what would I do? You haven't learned that yet. Some of you still in geometry. Some of you geometers that have already taken geometry. You geometry pros, yeah. Give me, give me a sec. People are, people are talking. Good. Guys, she's talking. So it's, I think it's, um, it's been a couple months. It's been a couple months. Anybody, anybody know? Um, maybe yeah, good. You multiply all the dimensions. So you do the height times the length times the width. Okay, so so follow me here. Centimeters cubed. Let's say they're measuring this height and this length and this width in centimeters. So the units here, multiplying the units together, would be centimeters times centimeters <laughs> times centimeters, which equals centimeters cubed. That's why volume um, can be measured in centimeters cubed. Okay. Uh, okay, moving on now to density. So density is um, essentially it's how tightly packed or how heavy the molecules are in an object. Take those, those atoms or those molecules, how tight, if they're really, really tightly packed together, you would say it, if that thing is very dense. If the, uh, the atoms or molecules are very loosely packed together, like say in a gas, we would say it has low density. So really tight, tightly packed together, going back to the states and how to be like a solid, we would say that's high density. And then like a liquid is gonna be somewhere in between. Okay. Um, another more formal way of defining density is the amount of matter within a certain volume. Okay, so you have your volume, you got that box up there. The amount of matter you can fit in that box, you fit more of it in there, you would say it's high density. If you're fitting less of it, you would say it's low density. So I don't think it's a super complicated concept, but um, that's kind of the basic idea. Good here. Okay. Now then, how do you find density? So a lot of the problems you would see um, on a test or like the SOL or something would be using the density formula. Now the density formula is this: density equals mass divided by volume. So first, you want, to, you want to find the mass of the object. Now, in the lab, that's what we're going to be using the scales for. Like, you're actually going to, you're going to be measuring the density of different metals. You'll actually put your sample of metal on the scale to get the mass. To find the volume, um, we'll see in the lab that you're going to have to use, like, how much the water changes in volume when you add the metal. But we'll, we'll do that in the lab. But in some of these problems, they'll, they'll usually will give you 
two of the three variables. So they'll, either, they'll give you density, or maybe you solve for density, like in this case, we're calculating density, and then they give you mass, and then you have to divide it by the volume. So density is mass divided by volume. So density would be, find your mass, they tell us 35 grams. Okay. Then divide by the volume. Here they tell us the volume is seven centimeters cubed. Okay, so 35 divided by seven would be what? Five. Five. Yep. Five, and what are the units? This is another kind of, um, you know, some test. They could give you two answer choices out of five, but one answer choice out of the correct units, the, the other answer choice might have the incorrect units. What would the units be? Centimeters cubed will be in there, but if it's not five centimeters cubed, if you say that, that would be incorrect. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good. Grams divided by centimeters cubed. The reason for that is thinking of like, go back to the warm up where we would see the units cancel out, right? Here, we don't see the units cancel, it's just grams divided by centimeters cubed. Nothing canceled, so that's why both units are in the answer. Okay, uh, so go ahead and get that lab in front of you and we'll go over it.